Hey everyone, it is finally here and I have it in my hands, the Sony a7 IV. I never thought this day would come and I'm super excited it is finally here. As usual, we're gonna be taking this camera body out in the field to test out everything that it has to offer. I've actually been using this for the last couple of weeks, so I'm really excited to share with you guys my thoughts and all the things that I've been shooting on it. We have so, so much to get through. I have so many examples to show you guys, so we're gonna jump straight into it. If you're new to my channel, I am a full-time Sony a7 III user. I use the a7 III for my client work, so weddings, fashion, portrait photography, and travel photography as well. So one of the most important things I wanted to see upgraded in the a7 IV is the autofocus, and Sony really did deliver. Even on a pre-production camera where the firmware is not 100% finalized yet, the autofocus is so sticky on the subject no matter what I threw at it. I'm using the GM 35mm f1.4 for these human IAF tests. The a7 IV has 759 phase detection AF points which means it covers about 94% of the frame while you're shooting. You can also use IAF or subject tracking to keep focus on your subject. We have human IAF in both stills and video mode. In video mode, I found IAF works just as well as stills mode. I love how easily it just tracks a subject in the frame. Something I wasn't able to try yet, but I think you will be pretty excited about because I am too, is that apparently touch tracking and touch focus can now be controlled from the Imaging Edge mobile app which is something that we have been asking for and was so needed for such a long time. So I'll definitely be trying it out eventually when it's available to see how it works. So sure, we kind of expected to have great human IAF in stills in video mode after getting to see how newer Sony cameras AF performs. What I think is really cool is that we have animal IAF in stills and video mode as well. Like I mentioned in my A1 review video is that even though the A1 might be out of a lot of people's price range, you should still get excited about it because the features in that camera will eventually trickle down to Sony's more affordable camera bodies as well, which we are seeing happening right now. Animal IAF works great in stills mode. In video mode, I found it was working amazing on easier subjects such as my kitties, Evie and Olive. While Dan and I were out shooting a different video, we came across a family of kangaroos, so we weren't fully prepared to get photo and video of them as my tripod was being used for something else, so I'm really sorry for some of this shaky footage. But I found that sometimes we caught some really impressive moments just relying on IAF in photo and video mode alike. And sometimes we had a really clear shot of the kangaroos, but IAF wasn't appearing on the frame. This again could be due to unfinished firmware. We also have bird IAF in stills and video mode. Unlike my one video where I was trying to capture bird IAF with a 135, I came prepared this time. I'm using the G200 to 600 millimeter lens to get these shots and some with my two times teleconverter as well. Bird IAF was working so well for me during the time I was using it. I loved how it worked and how easy it was for me, a portrait photographer, to get some bird photo and video. While these are all features that are pretty amazing to have in what is a consumer-orientated Sony camera body in the same tier as the a7 III and a7C, it has in turn made me a little disappointed about the a7S III, which is considered by Sony to be a top-end model alongside the a9 II and a7R IV just under the flagship A1. In the a7S III, we have human IAF in stills and video, but only animal IAF in stills. Since I use the a7S III for video production, I really hope Sony end up introducing animal IAF in video mode and bird IAF in stills and video with a firmware update. The weather took a little bit of a turn today for our photo shoot. It's quite gloomy and wet today, but we're gonna make it work. Today I'm gonna to be shooting on three different prime lenses on the a7 IVs, but first I'm gonna take a closer up look at this camera body. I feel like there has definitely been an ergonomic upgrade to the a7 IV. It reminds me a lot of the a7S III and the a7R IV. The grip where your hand goes when you're shooting feels a lot more comfortable to hold. We have dual card slots in this camera. We have two UHS-II SD card slots and one CF Express Type A 
card slot. We have a double layered mode dial. The first layer you get to choose between photo, video, and SNQ mode, and then the top layer you get to switch between PSAM and your recalls. Something I really, really love is that they've switched the exposure compensation dial to just an infinity dial, so you can use that to shortcut it to whatever you want. I currently have it set to ISO, but I'm also considering using it as a white balance shortcut, and you also have a lock button on it as well. We also have an upgraded EVF and LCD screen. The only thing I don't like is that we do have a flippy screen on the A7 IV, which if you guys know me, I definitely prefer using a tilt screen when it comes to photography. I like just tilting my screen down a little bit like that when I'm shooting so I don't have the sun reflecting and I can see what I'm doing. It's a little bit inconvenient for me having to flip it the whole way out. Um, yeah, I'm a little bit upset about that. <laughs> and we also have the grippier joystick as well, which is something I also really wanted in an upgraded a7 III body. Normally when I do a photo shoot with the a7 III, I will have IAF on, but I'll also have a small flexible focus point that I'll always keep on my subject's eye in case IAF doesn't work for some reason while I'm shooting. With the a7 IV on the other hand, I really want to make the camera do all the work for me today so we can see its performance and its focus accuracy. So I'm gonna have IAF on, with a wide focus point and I'm also going to be making use of subject tracking to see how it works throughout the day. As always, I wanted to say thank you to Sony Australia for getting this camera in my hands early, but this video is not sponsored by Sony. They lend me the camera to use and that's it. They don't ask me to say anything, they don't review my videos, so all thoughts and opinions are totally my own. I'm starting off taking portraits on the GM 35mm f1.4 and I will be sharing with you 100% crops of the unedited, straight out of the camera JPEG since I don't have access to the raw photos yet. I had so much fun during this rainy shoot and we took a lot more photos than I will be able to share in today's video. So I was thinking of releasing this shoot as its own behind the scenes video when I have access to the rolls. Let me know if that's something you guys want to see eventually. I love that like as a close up with your hand then. And just pull your head a little bit more straight then. Yeah, perfect. The Sony a7 IV has a 33 megapixel back illuminated image sensor and I'm really loving the image quality coming out of this camera. It reminds me a lot of the A1 and A7S III files in terms of look and style. The a7 IV shares the same processor and new menu system as those two cameras. I'm actually very happy about having 33 megapixel files to work with now. As a photographer, it means I have more freedom to crop in post while still maintaining good image resolution and on YouTube, it will be handy to be able to take a better look at lens performance when we're reviewing and comparing gear since we can take a closer look at the photos. So I want to take a burst of photos here. I just want to see how well it keeps up with autofocus and how fast the buffer clears out as well. Okay, so I'm just going to hold it down. Perfect. Now that we've taken a look at some of the photos so far, I think the colors are something else out of this camera. I think they look true to life and really beautiful. The skin tones look absolutely amazing and let me know what you think in the comments, but I adore the colors. Just like the a7 III, we have 15 stops of dynamic range. I will have to try that out properly when I have access to the raw files to see how much we can push and pull the tones. Now we also have the option of shooting 10-bit HEIF files instead of JPEG in either 422 or 420 color sampling if you are after smaller files with the same amount of information. I'm switching over to the GM 85mm f1.4 now. In the a7 IV, you have the option to have the shutter close on power off, which is similar to the A1 and A92. So that means if you're an on-location shooter like me, there is less chance for dust to get into your sensor with any lens changes you do. I will personally have it switched off still as I find it easier to clean a sensor rather than potentially having to clean or service the shutter. Ooh. So far during the shoot, I have only been relying on IAF and subject tracking to keep focus on my subject and it works super well. 
I had a really great focus ratio when culling the images to edit. Here's a little batch of photos so you can see how good the focus is. I also love that in image review you can turn on and off to see where the IAF point was when you took the image. Finally, I'm using the GM 135mm f1.8 for some last portraits and here the rain really started coming down so we were limited in what spots we could shoot in since I didn't want to have Lydia be soaking wet as it was cold. While we're looking at some of these 135 photos, I did want to touch on a few features of the a 7 4 that I didn't get the chance to try out since this is pre-production and not internally finalized yet. We will have faster FTP background transfer with 5 GHz Wi-Fi, so when you get home from a shoot, you can have your cards automatically transfer to your FTP server, or you can have your images transfer while shooting at home or in a studio if you're connected to your server. I do this a lot when I'm taking a few pictures and thumbnails at home as it's super convenient, but on the a7 III doing this is really slow, so I'm looking forward to making use of these faster speeds. We will also be able to use this camera as a webcam with no extra software via USB-C. You can also shoot tethered via USB-C or with an Ethernet adapter just like the a7S III. Lovely. And I'm getting quite a wide shot, so if you wanted to move your arms out for this one too. Dan captured some video shots of Lydia so we can take a better look at the video files as well. These were all shot on the GM 35mm f1.4 with IAF and subject tracking the entire time. Dan also shot all of these handheld so we can see the stabilization. I'm super excited the a7 IV records in 422 10-bit. The footage looks really beautiful and matches the video quality from the A1 and A7S III. In 4K, you can record 30 frames per second in full frame 16x9, which makes use of 7K oversampling. We also have 4K 60fps available in the a7 IV at the expense of an S35 crop, which makes use of 4.6K oversampling. The a7 IV does not overheat when shooting in 4K. I did a stress test at home and was able to record nearly four hours of continuous 4K footage and never had the overheating warning pop up. I ended up recording until the 256GB memory card filled up without any issues. I was able to get the overheat warning pop up once in stills mode outside in the sun on a hot day. With a CF Express Type A card shooting in continuous high speed plus with raw files, you are able to burst shoot the entire card, which ended up being more than 800 images. However, it was just a warning and I was still able to shoot photos and record more video afterwards with no issues. This is an example of what a walking video shot looks like with stabilization turned off, stabilization on, and active stabilization. Just to make it extra fun, these shots were all taken on very uneven ground with Dan walking backwards. I really like what active stabilization looks like. Here's a shot of me standing in the same spot so we can see the crop caused by active stabilization. And here's all the picture profiles we have available as well. As usual, I am most excited about having Cine Tone available in the Ace of Ball. Another new feature we have is focus breathing compensation, which works with some G and GM lenses. Here I'm using it with the GM35. This is one other feature that I'm happy is in the A7IV, but disappointed is not in the A7S III, since that's a dedicated video camera and this is a video feature. It works pretty well at getting rid of focus breathing at the expense of a slight crop, just like active stabilization. You can also use both features together, which will double up on the crop. Finally, I have some low light tests to share with you. This was filmed in 4K 25p at ISO 2500, and it kept focus with animal and human IAF just as well as it did in brighter natural light. I had one continuous small softbox set up a few meters away from me and at only 1% strength to keep the room as dim as possible. Another exciting feature for photographers is that we have the same variable shutter option as the A1. So if you like to shoot events like weddings for example in silent shutter, you can fine tune the shutter to avoid banding from artificial light in your shots. With the same lighting setup, I used my low light model Dan to test out all the ISOs with both noise reduction on and off as I know everyone has their own preference on how to use that. And I'm showing you all these images at 100% crop. 
I can easily see myself shooting natural low light up to ISO 10,000. I really like the way the a7 IV handles colors in low light. I think Dan's skin tone looks great and there is no crazy color splotches anywhere, especially with noise reduction on. The lighting I'm using is quite warm as well, similar to what I experience when shooting wedding receptions. I can see myself pushing ISO 20,000 or even 25,600 if I'm desperate for extra light, and I think past that, the image loses too much sharpness and there's too much noise for my liking. But overall, I'm really happy with the low light performance. So while I show you a few extra photos, I think I need to answer the question of are you going to upgrade? And yes, I will be upgrading to the a7 IV from the perspective of a full-time portrait and wedding photographer. So the a7 III's that I have have been amazing for the last three years that I've used them and they will continue being an amazing camera as well. But I am looking forward to some quality of life upgrades. There have been times when I'm at a wedding or doing a editorial or fashion shoot where I have felt like would be nice if I had a little bit of this or if this was a bit faster. So the two main things that I wanted upgraded in the a7 III is better autofocus, which we definitely got, and more because we have the human IAF, but also animal and bird IAF in stills and video. The second thing that I really wanted upgraded is a better LCD screen, which it's a little bit of a shame that it is a flippy screen. I am still sad about that, but I think the positives of that camera outweigh the negatives of a flippy screen for me. I'm also really enjoying the colors and the image quality straight out of camera. I feel like the a7 IV files remind me so much of the A1 and the a7S III files, which feels like a new generation of Sony colors, which I'm really, really loving. And I'm also really happy with the low light capabilities of this camera as well, because I do love to shoot wedding receptions in natural light. But I would love to hear from you guys in the comments. What do you think? Do you think this camera is worth it? Are you going to be upgrading to the a7 IV? And if you are, why? Those are my most important features, but I really love hearing from you all as well. So let me know down in the comments. But otherwise, thank you so, so much for watching. I make a new video every single week, so I will see you all next time. Bye.